Hello everybody, this is Matt with MattsMath.com. Thanks for joining us here today as we talk about the standard form. We've been looking at graphs and today we're going to be looking at how to graph using the standard form of an equation. We are in the Common Core Standard of Functions and we're going to be defining, evaluating, and comparing functions. That's the big picture today. Well, our guiding question is how can we describe a graph in the form of a times x plus b times y equals c? And you'll be learning all about that here in just a minute. All right, so let's look at this here. This is our standard form. This is what we're going to be looking at. And just to talk about these letters here, A represents a number. B represents a different number. Could be the same if you want, but typically they're going to be different. And then C represents a different number. So and unlike Y equals MX plus B form, is the X and the Y are together, and then the number is on the other side of the equal sign. Pretty simple, just moving, just a matter of moving things around. So there might be times when it's actually easier to write an equation of a line like this than when it's y equals mx plus b. And let's, let's learn how to use that. It's going to be called the standard form. We're going to be using that from here on out, and it's going to look like this, where a, b, and c are numbers. Well, let's look at this example here. You and your family are going to a concert and you spend $16. Each adult ticket is 4 bucks, and each child ticket is 2 How many adult and child tickets did your family buy? Well, first we have to write an equation from that. And this one is much easier to write using the standard form than, say, y equals mx plus b. Let's talk about it. Well, you and your family go into the concert and you spend 16 bucks. So that means you're going to equal $16. That's the C. The C here is 16. Well, each adult ticket is $4. All right? So there, let's just call the adult tickets X. We're going to write 4X, meaning $4 per ticket of how many ever tickets you buy. Okay? And then we're going to add $2 per child ticket, where child tickets will be Y. So it'll be 2 y. Very easy to write it this way. Now if we turn this to y equals mx plus b, we might not actually see how this equation makes sense. So that's our equation. 4x plus 2y equals 16. Can you remember that? All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plot and put these points into a table. If we think about it, remember our equation was 4x plus 2y equals 16. Well, let's start off. Let's just do it this way. We can have zero adult tickets, right? Well, if that's zero, plug in zero for x, y becomes 2, y equals 16. Well, how do you, when that's gone, you get 2y equals 16, y equals 8. So you could buy eight child tickets. Now, what happens if we bought one adult ticket? One, plug in one there, and you get four, plus 2y equals 16. We'll bring the 4 over, and that gets me 12, and so y equals 6. Now, we can have 2. If you want to pause the video and fill it in yourself, that'd be great. Well, if we have two adult tickets, that's going to give us 8. Bring it over, it's 8, and that's going to be 4. If we have 3, bring it over, we're going to have 2. We have four, we're gonna have zero. All right, so these are our points. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna plot these on a graph. So this becomes zero, eight is our first point, one, six is our second point, two, four is our third, three, two, and four, zero. Does that make sense? This represents zero adult tickets, eight child tickets. One adult, six kids, two adults, four kids, three adults, two kids, and four adults and no kids. Okay, so let's put this on a graph. All right, so I'm going to fill this out. Our first point was 0, 8. So 0, 8 right there. Our next point was 1, 6. Our next point, so this is 8, 6, 4, and 2. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Next is there, there, and there. So there is our graph. We have now taken something in standard form and graphed it. Now, can this is this continuous or discrete? You remember what those terms mean? If you think about it, can you have a dot right here? Can you have a dot right there? Can you have half a kid? Well, 
I haven't tried, but I don't think you can have half a kid. All right? Can you have seven adults? Yeah. Or seven kids? Yep. Half an adult? Don't think it's possible. All right. So that's what we're looking at there. And there's a hint. If you know the X, then you can just follow down and you can use the pattern there. Notice the pattern was pretty simple. It was a one to two pattern. Well, now we're going to go buy some cheese. Yummy. We love cheese, don't we? Swiss cheese and cheddar. So what you're going to do is you're going to write an equation, four pounds of cheddar, uh, well, for four dollars a pound per Swiss and two dollars a pound per cheddar. What's the equation there? Try to write it in standard form. But what I want you to do now is I want you to take it, take this equation here, and you're going to solve for y. So you're going to put it in y equals mx plus b form. You're going to put it in slope-intercept form. Okay. Put it on the graph here. All right. If we move everything over, how do you solve for y? Well, we subtract 4x, subtract 4x, and then we're going to end up dividing by 2. So we're going to end up with y equals 8 minus 2x. Well, this is what we graph. We graph that right there. Let's do it. So y-intercept of 8, still use that as 8, and now we're going to go down 2 over 1. So if this is 6, 4, 2, and 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, that's 8. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go down 2 over 1. So down 2 to 6 over 1, down 2 to 4 over 1, and there is our line. Now is this line going to be continuous or is it going to be discrete? Well, if you think about it, you can buy half a pound of cheddar. I love buying half pounds of cheddar. Are you good? So, yep, we can do that. We're not going to have dots like we did with the other one where you can buy half an adult or something like that. Absurd. Well, what are you noticing? Noticing anything about the two equations? Which one's easier to graph? It's definitely easier to graph y equals mx plus b, huh? So if it's easier sometimes to write the equation like this, but you might want to be able to turn it to this to graph it like that, okay? All right, notice they are the same graphs. And which method would you prefer to use the graph equation? Plug it into the table or y equals mx plus b? All right, well, there's a couple different ways we can do it. We're going to definitely solve for y. That's one way to graph with the standard form. So, for example, here is our standard form. Notice our a is negative 1, our b is 3, and our c is negative 6. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to solve for y. So we're going to add x to both sides. We're going to end up with this, 3y equals x plus negative 6. And then now what we're going to do is get rid of the 3 in front of the y there, get rid of that guy, and we're going to divide by 3 both sides, and now we get y equals one-third x minus two. And now you can graph that. Much easier to graph this than it is this. Okay, so let's do that. We're gonna get on our graph here, and we're gonna start off at negative two, right there. And then our slope is one over three, so we're gonna go up one over three, and we're gonna go down one back three, and that is our line here. Looks good, huh? Like the red. Love it. All right, let's do the next one. Now, the other way to do this is to find the intercepts. Now, if you remember what an intercept is, an intercept is where the line hits the x-axis or the y-axis. So the first thing we're going to do is find the x-intercept with this equation. Well, do you know what y equals when the line hits the x-intercept? Think about it. Well, y equals 0 when the line hits the x-intercept. Okay, y equals 0. So what we do is we take that 0, plug it back in, and bam, there we go. So we get negative x plus 3 times 0 equals negative 6. Well, solve that out, you get x equals 6. So our x-intercept is uh, 6, 0. That's our first point. So we're going to put 6, 0 on the graph. Okay, so we found the x-intercept. Now what we're going to do is find the y-intercept. What does x equal when the line hits the y-intercept? All right, x equals 0. So we plug 0 in for x. 0 in for x. We solve, and we get y equals negative 2. So our second point, then, is 0, negative 2. 
Our first point was 6, 0. Second point is 0, negative 2. Now we can graph those two points on the graph, and bam, we're going to get another graph. 0, negative 2. And then uh, the other one is off the graph here because it's at 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to be over here. And we'll just make do, put it over there. And then we're going to graph, and bam, there is our line. All right? So very similar to what we did before. This is our graph. All right. Now we're going to buy groceries. And same kind of thing. You're going to spend $6 on apples and or bananas so you can get one or the other. And then you're going to get $0.60 cents per pound for bananas and $1.50 per pound for apples. Would you try and graph this equation? All right, what did you get? Did you get the uh, actual standard form equation? What do x and y, the x and y intercepts represent? Can you think about that? All right, well, let's put it on the equation. Let's make our equation here. And it's going to be $6 equals 0.6x plus 1.5y. Now, why is that? $6, that's how much we're spending. 0.6 represents 60 cents per pound of banana, whereas 1.5 represents $1.50 per pound of apple. Okay. Now, it's not necessarily as easy to graph this, but if we take x equals 0, when we plug in x equals 0 here, we get 1.5y, 6 divided by 1.5, y equals 4. So your first point on the graph is x equals 0, y is 4. That's your first point. Now, when y equals 0, plug it back in here, y equals 0, we get 0.6x equals 6. So then we take it and we divide by 0.6, divide by 0.6 here, 6 divided by 0.6 is 10. So then we're going to get x equals 10. And then, so if we count by 2's down here, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And this was by 1's. We're going to put a point here. And this is now going to be our line of how many apples and bananas we can buy. What does this represent? X, remember, was pounds of bananas. And Y was, again, the pounds of apples. So what do those represent? Well, this represents buying only what? Buying only bananas. And this represents buying only apples. I like both, so I'm going to be somewhere in the middle. Where are you going to be? All right? That's why we use standard form. Pretty cool idea, huh? All right, so what I want you to do now is I want you to graph this using intercepts. 2x minus y equals 8. All right, here it is. You should have something like this using the intercepts. And then x plus 3y equals 6. Why don't you graph this using intercepts as well? All right, what'd you get? Did you get something like this? You should have got something like that. All right. Well, how you doing? Are you able to describe a graph in the form of ax plus by equals c in standard form? I bet you can. That's pretty much it for today as we talked about the standard form. Thanks again for joining us. This was Matt with mattsmath.com. Definitely check us out on Facebook at Solving Maths Problems or on Twitter on Matt's Math. And enjoy math.